This is the Final Word Daily, coming to you from the MCG. It's Boxing Day. That means it's the Boxing Day test. You can figure that out for wow, yourself. Wow, that's true, it is. Jeff Lemon and Barrett Cinderason with you. Australia versus South Africa, the first day of the second test match. And Barrett, it is up to you to summarise an entire day's play in the space of 30 seconds. Off you go. Here we go. On Boxing Day, Pat Cummins wins the toss at the MCG and decides to field not because the pitch was green, not because he thought there was too much help for his bowlers, but because he knew South Africa would collapse. And South Africa collapsed, not once, but twice. They collapsed before lunch and then there was a 112-run partnership between Kyle Verena and uh, Marco Janssen and they collapsed again. And they were bowled out once again under 200 and then David Warner came and batted and wasted some time in the end, but made sure he's unbeaten. So, it's all about David Warner tomorrow. That was good. Yeah, that was actually good. in the 30 seconds. Yeah, thank you. I'm I, getting better at this. I did not think that you would ever get to that point, but we've got there. It was 30 seconds and it contained most of the things about the I day's did, play. actually. The I thought change. <laughs> um, Cameron Green, five wickets. Ah, maybe, I knew I missed out. Maybe something. should have slipped that in there. That is true. Um, but you, there's always something. Yeah, do you know, like I, I did a 30 second thing in Adelaide the day Michael Nisa took a lot of wickets and I didn't mention him and then I kind of made up for it by saying, oh, I did not mention Michael Nisa because I wanted to give him a special mention. That was a lie. I just, just, you know, in, my, in this whole, in this, my stress to finish it in 30 seconds, I left out Michael Nisa, imagine. <laughs> Is it, well, yeah, you do the 30-second summary, then you do the 30-minute summary of Michael Nisa's wickets. <laughs> of course you do that. Of course you do that. So, okay, uh, look, the way things went today, I, I agree with your perception, which was that Cummins, it's not like it was a raging seamer, but he said, well, we'll beat these guys more yeah. easily. By bowling first. Also, I mean, his rationale at the toss was if there's going to be anything in it, yes. it'll be day one, morning one. And also, it, it wasn't hot yet. So the forecast was that it was supposed to be early 30s today and high 30s tomorrow. So, it was, you know, he, he sort of looked at it and said, well, if we can bowl them out on the first day, we'll get the cooler of the conditions. It was cloudy at the toss. At least you get a, a cool hour in the first morning for the, the fast bowlers to operate. And that's how it worked out, you know, even though... Uh, Dean Elgar and Sarah Alevia batted pretty well. They got through the first 10 overs. I mean, had some luck as well. Mm. Elgar gets dropped. Uh, there's the, the ball that rolls into his stumps <laughs> and doesn't knock the bales off. But it, it felt like it was a matter of time. And eventually, you know, it's, it's Scott Boland who comes in, obviously, and, and picks up the wicket. Yeah, and the only team who have actually batted first after winning the toss at the MCG in recent times are Australia. They did it in 2020 uh, on what felt like a batting day against India. Uh, and it didn't work out for them. They were bowled out similarly to how South Africa were today. The pitch was tacky. Ashwin came into the game early. Uh, and we all know how that match finished. So I think that was also probably playing on Pat Cummins' mind. Because it felt a lot like that Boxing Day. Boxing Day 2020. Uh, but I'm sure when you look at that South African batting lineup, as we've seen already through the year and in the series already, you are tempted as a bowling captain especially to kind of put them in even if you think there's a little bit of an offer. Like you said, if you think that this is the only time we're going to get something out of this pitch, that batting lineup also tempts you and they were completely right. But having said that, I don't think just like at the Gab Australia bowled particularly great. They were good in patches during the first session. It was South Africa, South Africa just gifting their wickets or just making bad decisions. That shot from uh, Thaneus De, De Bruyne or De, De Bruyne would like you know, was not. It, it was a shot of someone who averages 19 in Test cricket and who will continue averaging 19 in Test cricket if he <laughs> keeps batting at number three because he is a number six batter forced to play at number three. Because the previous ball he tries to play, the ramp misses, and the next ball he plays like an atrocious shot. Uh, top edges, it gets caught by Alex Carey behind the wicket. Um, so that's where I think the game game opened up mm -hmm. for for Australia. Uh, till then, South Africa looked like maybe they had learned from their mistakes and they were get, putting a few things right. But that opens the door and then Dean Elgar makes the cardinal mistake of hitting the ball straight to Manus Labuschagne. Okay, he did have to move a little bit to his right. And then running. There was no run there. 20 minutes left for lunch. Mm. The guy barely misses hitting the stumps. Maybe 8 out of 10 times he hits the stumps. What is the percentage there? Why are you going for that run? So that bad choice gets made. Uh -huh. And then Temba Bauma 
I mean, no, he next didn't. ball, next, next ball. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it was it was bizarre. There were uh, almost because what we saw in Brisbane was really early. Wickets fell really early. You know, Elgar gloving one down the leg side yes. in the first innings and so on. So they get through the first ten overs. They think they're kind of in mm. in the game. You know, they've seen off the initial burst. But then Ervia gets out, could be trouble. But De Bruyne and Elgar bat together until the end of the twentieth over. You know, they've got fifty six on the board. I think at that point. One wicket down, you're like, well, that's not too bad for a, a team that's been going so badly. And then bang, 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 three wickets. And so they go into lunch at four for 56. Like, they've, they've just thrown away that advantage. The De Bruyne shot, well, it didn't show a lot of De Bruyne, um, but yeah. it, it, <laughs> ben, Jones, <clears throat> ben Jones told me that that was the fullest ball that Tiernus De Bruyne has ever tried to pull. That's what their stats told me. Oh, wow. He never played a pull shot to a fuller delivery than that. Um, it, it was too full and it was outside the off stump as well. He's trying to fetch it from outside off stump and drag it away through the leg side, um, aiming over mid wicket and it ends up with the wicket keeper. So, you know, there's uh, obviously you, you can see what the problem is there. Uh, and then, yeah, Elgar's mistake and, and Baboumas just defending down the line Good of the ball. ball. Yeah. And yeah, decent ball, cr- scrambled seam, it moved away a little bit. You know, it wasn't unplayable, but, yeah. but he's basically just holding the bat still yeah. and it's able to, I mean, Stark has such carry that it yeah. takes the edge and ends up in the hands of first slip. And then it's all about having uh, a rebuild. Well, Kayazondo falls after the break, yeah, he um, does. just after. And, I mean, again, an atrocious shot. Little Every, shot. Yeah. Everything he played was like throwing his hands at a wide yeah. ball. And then he slaps one to cover, Labashane, diving catch, reels it in, good really catch. good catch. Yeah. Um, and you're like, well, at some point they have to have some sort of partnership. And yeah. it's Kyle Verena again and Marco Janssen, who looked very unconvincing oh, when he, he defended, yeah. but started to look better when he attacked. He did. I think he really was uh, sorted out by the short ball. And it, it must be very difficult when you're that tall to get out of the way from the short ball. Mitchell Stark bowled this outstanding spell to him where he kept following him. And at one point, I remember, he kept backing up, backing away and trying to get out of harm's way. But then he ended up getting into positions, Janssen, where he couldn't get out of. Because whenever Stark followed him, and that's why he got hit quite a few times on the body, I think he got the blow on the side of his helmet as well at one point. Mm. Because he was getting into these awkward positions. So the, clearly, the one in the armpit, he, he yeah, sort of tries to ride the bounce and he gets and hit he gets right hit. In, under the arm. I mean, that hurts. There's no padding there. Oh, absolutely. And the physio had to come out at least two or three times to check on him. At one point, it was very cute. He, uh, the physio came out to give him eye drops and Marco Janssen dropped down to his knees just so that the physio could reach his eyes. Uh, much like how we're doing this sitting down so that I don't look three feet shorter than Jeff. <laughs> I'm not, but I do when we do stand next to each other. Um, but yeah, I think Janssen, to his credit, faced over 100 balls. Soaked in that pressure, soaked in on the short ball pressure. Pat Cummins came in and did the same thing. Um, and I, I think the point was Australia would have been the most frustrated if then Usman Khawaja drops that catch. Because it was a beautiful period of play. They had worked him over for two sessions, uh, two hours. Yes, he played a few attractive drives and he does, you know, he's got the long levers, doesn't he? Oh, God. So, whenever it's full, he is beautiful. He looks very good at driving. He swept Nathan Lyon well. I thought he played Nathan Lyon really well. But they went for the short pitch ploy. Uh, Steve Smith walked in, put Usman Khawaja at a catching square leg, if that makes sense. And the ball goes straight to him, last over before T, and Khawaja drops him. At this point, you feel like, okay, maybe South Africa, like, you know, not, not really got on top, but gotten under those Australian skins. And then you come back from the break. Uh, Janssen gets to a 50, Mitchell Stark goes off the field, and then Cam Green is made to continue his spell. And that's when the game turns around for the final time yeah. on, on the uh, and it was poetic almost that Cam Green would break that partnership when Australia were technically a bowler down because Stark was off the field. That's his job and he did it perfectly. The value of Cam Green, three million bucks at the IPL during the week and then yeah in this situation I think that was the fourth catch that Australia dropped so you yeah. know, they bowled them out for 180 and dropped four catches <laughs> along the way. That, yeah. The Stark one was tough, there was one mm. for Lyon at point off Green uh, earlier that would have been very difficult yeah. diving catch so there were two what would have been screamers had they been taken yeah. and, and then the more straightforward ones for Cummins and Kawaja that they put down. But yeah, the, the point where Stark's off the field, Green comes in, and in the space of three deliveries across two overs, he gets the edge from Verena, then he gets the edge from Janssen, um, and then a couple of overs after that, he goes straight through Rabada, straight yeah. through Ngidi, 
Ends up with a five wicket haul. Lyon got the other wicket to fall in Maharaj, who tried to slog him and ended up getting caught. But yeah, Very five lucky. for 27. Cameron Green, he's never taken a five for before. I mean, that's 24 wickets, I reckon, yeah. from 18 test matches thereabouts, um, which is quite a lot, actually. You see, you know, I mean, Damien Fleming played 20 test matches. Yeah, no, you know, Ryan Harris played something like yeah. 18 test matches. There were... There are some, some players who've had extensive careers over a, a period of years, but they only get to play occasionally. Yep. And they end up with 18, 20, 25, 30 yeah. tests. He's already nearly got 20, um, just from being such a consistent <laughs> fixture in the team in the last couple of years. And he's still learning. He still seems like a kid. Absolutely. You know, and I mean, what did someone ask him in the press? So what are you going to do with your $3 million? And he said, I'd like to buy a nice iPad. Yeah. It's... Like, mate, you can, get, you can get an iPad the size of an Olympic swimming pool if you want. You can crawl around on top of your text messages if you want to, like for that sort of money. Maybe it's like a diamond encrusted like uh, iPad or yeah. I mean we we are not calculating a lot of money he will lose to tax in, you know, in this country. We end up paying a lot of tax. I realized, but <laughs> yeah, I don't think three point five million sounds like a great number, but I don't know how much of that he will get, and he still has to go and play a few matches in the IPL, which yeah. I'm sure he will. But but you know, I think I, if he gets half of three point five million, he can still buy a, an iPad. Ah, you would think so. Yeah. yeah. I, unless there is an iPad out there that we don't know. Like maybe it's an iPad that turns into a car. Wow. Yeah. But then it has to be a massive iPad for a, to, to turn into a car yeah. that Cam Green can get into as well. So. Well, maybe it's, it's like one that you can get into. You know, you can pull up a picture of a tropical paradise uh -huh. and then you can just climb into the iPad and you're there. Deck. Travel deck on yeah. Star Trek. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there you go. Maybe. Maybe that. Maybe that's the iP iPad he wants. But you're right. Even now in the press conference, he just the, uh, the ums and the ahs sound like not someone who's hmm. uh, not good at public speaking, but someone who's really, really young. Like he kept brushing aside all these questions about the 3.5 million. Uh, and I was there, you know, watching them train, and they were all getting stuck into him. Uh, yeah. it was my it's like he'll give it to his dad, and his dad will give him back a bit per week. You know, yeah, something like. that's what it feels like. Yeah, and uh, uh, it has to be right. <laughs> like, yeah, he's. It sounds like that anyway. He like yeah. I've spoken to, heard a lot of players over the years who've gone for a lot of money in IPL auctions and. Never heard them mention an iPad. It's generally at least a car. Like, yeah. And he did say, uh, Pat Cummins did say, you remember, he said uh, some, some of the other Australian teammates were sending him pictures of fancy cars parked outside their hotel to Cam Green. I don't know whether they want him to buy that or like, yeah. I actually offered him, um, like, like a gig, I offered myself a gig as well. I said, hey, if you ever need a guide in Mumbai, I, I lived there for 30 years. So, mm. you know, I thought you'd pay me a little bit. Like, maybe. It's, yeah. yeah. 10 grand a day. Why not? Why not? Um, you know, put, put your, put your, put your, Bit in. I mean, there was a lot of uh, a lot of chain worn tributes today. Yeah, true. As as we've often said, his motto was "Don't ask, don't get." You know, you might as you well. So know. so what? 186 they got bowled out for. 189. Like that. 189. Yeah. Sure. Uh, under 200 again. That's seven innings in a row for yeah. South Africa since the England tour that they've been bowled out for under 200. It didn't matter. Like all that talk about the pitch in Brisbane, much better batting pitch here. It doesn't matter. They're still not going to make 200 because they don't have the batting to do it. And then Australia come out, uh, Rabada gets Osman Khawaja for one, just sort of propping forward oh. in that way that he does and nicking one behind. But David Warner still there, 32 not out. He took on Rabada, uh, got bounced a bit, couple of hook shots for four, pull shots really. Yeah. Um, and then he uppercuts Norkia over slips as well. So, True. you know, the talk in Brisbane was, you know, Warner doesn't like short stuff, doesn't like fast stuff, can't face fast bowling. Looks pretty comfortable so far out there and he'll resume tomorrow with the chance to push on in his 100th test. A perfect narrative for day two, right? Today was all about Boxing Day, tribute to Shane Vaughan and just the, everything that goes with Boxing Day. David Warner playing his 100th test. But tomorrow it's about David Warner batting in his 100th test. So a reason for everyone to uh, come to the ground and fill up the MCG. Oh, I mean, 60,000 is a massive crowd. 64,000 today, pretty good crowd. Yeah, it's a pretty good crowd, even if it didn't fill up the MCG. Uh, but look, I remember asking him in the press conference about um, how his batting has evolved and one thing he did say was he felt that he hadn't been aggressive enough uh, in the last few seasons and he felt that maybe it was time that he went back to his old aggressive self. That's what he needs to get out of this sort of rut that he's gotten into in terms mm. of not getting a score. Um, and he's done that. We, there is that aggression about David Warner. The first volley face he tried to pull from Rabada, where strange first over, where every ball went like well, past his. Well after the last first ball he faced from Rabada, yeah. better to do anything except play or the shot. Play that, no, absolutely. Yeah. So he looked a lot more confident today uh, doing that. So good signs for Australia. That Usman Khawaja just had a bad day, really. Dropped catch, a lot of misfields. Uh, a couple, I remember, where they wanted Janssen on strike, but he would just misfield mm -hmm. the ball at leg slip. Uh, and, and then got out in very, uh, as 
Max Abbott said, like, got out like the Usman Khawaja of old, just like, just leaving his bat out there yep. to a ball that kind of just jagged away, could have left it alone. Uh, but yeah, Manus looks good as well. So, and, and you know, just Kyle Verena just there in the press conference. <laughs> he had to do the same job last week, he made, because he made a half century on day one, had to come and speak to the media and he said, oh, we back our bowlers to do everything. This pitch, you know, we, we still think we are in the game. He didn't sound very confident today because he kept saying, this is a very good pitch. We are most disappointed with today's performance as compared to all the other ones earlier in the year. For sure. Uh, the Hall of Fame, this is when we pick what strikes us as the most final word moment of the day. Uh, it's brought to you by Woodstock Cricket Bats, best cricket bats in the world. That's official. I didn't make that up. That's true. Uh, Woodstockcricket.co.uk. And if you put in TFW20, you get 20% off a new cricket bat. Why wouldn't you? I think there's only one contender for me. And, oh. and, and you, know, you know that I have some opinions that aren't necessarily those of everybody, of the cricket-watching public, you know, 150 is a bullshit milestone, for instance. Hmm. But my, my real one, my biggest one is I hate jinx talk. I just find it really tiresome oh, when annoying. people yeah, you yeah. say, "Oh, there's someone's batting well," and then they get out, and oh, someone's like, "Oh, it's your fault." It's people just making it about like, themselves. Yeah. Like, sure, that joke would be funny the first three times it happened. Yeah, but, like it's happened millions of times. And when you have, say, 64,000 people in a ground, at any point, one of them is going to have just said that someone's playing well, yeah, and then exactly, they'll, yeah. they'll get out. Right? It's, it's it's dull. It's repetitive. It's boring. But that's a, because it it is so likely that someone's just made that comment. Now, I don't draw any relationship between the comment and what happens, but there was an incredible coincidence today. Oh. Uh, Sir Swamp Thing, statistician yeah, on yeah, Twitter, yeah. who does some beautiful work there and pulls out some real niche oh, stuff. Yeah, and we does. like a niche number. Oh, yeah. And he produces some niche numbers that make us excited. Dean Elgar brings up his 5,000th test run. And Swamp puts up players to have made the most test runs never having been run out. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, Johnny Besto on about 5,400, Kapil Dev on about 5,200, and Dean Elgar just gone past 5,000. You're like, hang on, this guy could, he could go top of the pops. Yeah, if he, he plays another couple of years, you know, something goes wrong with Johnny Besto. Yeah. He's been playing for a decade. He's been playing test cricket for 10 years, never been run out. Swamp puts the stat up, and 10 minutes later, Dean Elgar's run out for the first time <laughs> yeah. in his career. It was a beautiful piece oh, of timing, um, a, absolutely sensational piece of timing in the end. And, and so salutations to the statisticians out there, on a hiding to nothing. Anything that jumped out at you? Actually, it's the guy who just walked past me earlier saying, I just love Boxing Day! He did love Boxing Day a lot. But I think for me, uh, it, it happens a lot, but just the experience of a hundred test veteran, David Warner, just before he faces the last ball, the clock's at 50. 5.59 Melbourne time uh, and, and, and other batters have done it as well I and mean, it happens very often but just to see David Warner do it in his 100 test was classic where he just moves away just as Janssen's about to deliver the ball and just wipes his brow and makes sure by then it's 6 o'clock that will be the last ball of the day not that South Africa were in a hurry and were eager to bowl another over but just the way he made sure in his 100 test that he didn't want to face even one more extra ball than he had to was just perfect. And then the classic front foot defence screamed no run at Manus and just walked off. I, it was nice to see him do that. Well, we'll be back tomorrow with day two. That's how a daily show works. Final word daily, Jeff Lemon, Bharat Sundarason. If you like what we do, find us on patreon.com slash the final word. Otherwise, we'll see you on day two. Yeah, block the sun nicely. <laughs>